What's up, everybody? Just got this sweet notification that I'm going to share with everyone. Um, I think a lot of people will ask me, like, yo, why do you do all this? What, what are you doing? And I'm going to share this so you can all see. So that's Eric Favors. Uh, just just broke the national record in the shot put in uh, in Ireland. Well, he's in Portugal, but he just broke it in Ireland. And I think that that's like the the big thing, right? Is that you get to see athletes develop, and you get to see athletes, you know, understand the grind. They learn how to push. They learn how to. Uh, work with the different phases of periodization they they get to develop over time i think that that's what the biggest thing i wanted to, to talk about today is that when we're looking at training it's always going to come back to what's the exercise splits okay what's the workout splits for the week if we understand what those workout splits are going to be uh and and that's going to be based off the the training period or the time of the the year that we're actually in training and then we're looking at all right if we understand the workout splits well then we got to look at all right what exercises are we doing on specific workout splits okay so if we're on day one you know what are we doing on day one versus day two versus day three versus day four five six you know and and then now everything starts to get dialed in and then you get an athlete like eric that i just showed you you know the the irish national record holder he just throws 2066 one of the best shot putters in the world he's at the european championships or european cup throwing cup and just got fifth place it's like Dude, that's why we're doing this. So now you understand Eric's temperament with the athlete reactive analysis. And then you're taking that that temperament and you're going, all right, now we're building off of this. Now we're making something cool. Now we're, we're going places. Now we're going to train for the world championships. Now we're putting ourselves in position to go to the Olympics. And it's all coming back to understanding the rest periods, understanding that exercise selection, understanding the reps, the sets, the workout splits for the week. And then the phase, that, that phase that we're in, and then how we're going to be working towards uh, that big-time goal, which is, you know, in some cases, just making a varsity team. In other cases, it's, it's you know, become an NCAA All-American like the South Dakota State wrestling team that we're working with right now. And then in other cases, we're working to go, you know, even bigger where, you know, we want to go to the Olympics. So I wanted to just throw in that right away because it's uh, – I, I felt like it was fitting. You know, we've been talking about – um, periodization. We released this this book, uh, Garage Strength Program Design. So we went over this. Uh, we spent this whole last week on our YouTube channel diving deep into all, everything around uh, program design. And actually, so this is my copy. I just want to share that you can see I'm even making notes inside of my copy of the Garage Strength Program Design. It's got a five-hour course, but we released that this week. And, and it's like, that's what everything comes down to. So we're going to close it out. After today, uh, you know, you can get this still today for 99 bucks, and that includes that five hours of lecture. Um, but after today, that's going to its normal price. So I wanted to go over that and then get into your questions right away because I think it's important to just uh, answer all your questions and help you guys uh, conquer your dreams and attain that peak strength. So AGC. Thirsty, I just got out of the sauna. Just got out of the sauna. Got a cold shower. AGC's got the peak fitness at peak strength is what it's called. He's been using it for eight weeks. Any additional options? Yes. So we've got, uh, so if you could do AG, you could do video check-ins on Discord. If you join our Discord, you can do uh, video check-ins. Steve, I just signed your copy. So I know it's coming out there. It should have left by like Wednesday or Thursday. Um AG, though, another thing is, is that we've got tonnage being released uh, in April. So we've been coming up with stuff around uh, tonnage and mechanical tension scores, which is going to get crazy. That's going to be the stuff that's going to change a lot uh, just in the strength and conditioning world. No one's talking about how to actually measure mechanical tension. And we're coming up with, yes, I am from Pennsylvania. We're coming up with ways uh, to actually monitor mechanical tension which is really what is going to be leading to those those key adaptations i and also guys um 
We also, you know, we talked about this at our last live where we went deep into uh, energy systems and understanding uh, energy systems relative to specific exercises and strength characteristics. And so we're going to get even deeper into that in peak strength as well. Um, I've been spending a lot of time. Yesterday I ran, yesterday I went out, tried to run a half marathon, and I didn't have any food on me. And I hit a wall around 11.6 miles. And I ended up walking a half of a mile, and then I ran that last mile. Uh, but that's another thing that I'm starting to really dive deep into is understanding energy systems, understanding how our body uses them in different uh, training situations, and then understanding how that can be implemented long term. Snake hearts on week 16, feeling stronger than ever. Absolutely, that's great. Johan, thoughts on cleans and snatches with straps, much stronger with straps. I think it's it would be sports specific. Uh, if you're training for weightlifting, I wouldn't use straps for the most part unless you're doing hangs. I don't like straps on cleans. Um, I don't hate them. But if you're training for a sport outside of weightlifting, I think they're okay. Do you have any tips for achieving a one-arm finger pull-up and coin bending? That's tough. I don't know much about that. Uh, hi, Coach. Dane, I've got some throwers that are currently in their ascension phase. This is from Alan Abara. I have an athlete with a hip flexor injury. It affects his O-lifts and squats. I'd change his program. Um, I would just do pulls on his O-lifts. I would try and figure out what doesn't hurt him, uh, what doesn't hurt when he does um, guys 230 and bigger should not run. That's funny. Yeah, you're right, Steve. You're probably right. So I would figure out what injury or what causes pain in his hip flexor, and, and then whatever's causing pain in his hip flexor, avoid that. And then whatever you feel is actually helping or might be helping it feel better, then I would try and hit that stuff more. Do front squats bother him when he when he you know when he's doing that? I would I would wonder about that. This is a great or a, no black cherry zevia. Sorry, I was you know I was a little parched. Let's see here. I, I saw a question up here. I'm, I worked on my snatch no matter what. My shoulders are always in pain, even when I'm only hitting an Olympic w with tens. Where, where are your shoulders in pain? Is that like rear delt? That would be another question I have. So my whole purpose too, when we're looking at everything, right, is like, do you guys understand what open skilled versus closed skilled? Do you understand um, all those aspects around sport identification? Do you understand how to test and things along that nature? And I think that that's some of those questions if you guys could could throw in here. If you've got any questions about testing, you got any questions about uh, understanding your weak points, your weak areas, you know, in this case, somebody's shoulders are hurting. If somebody's shoulders are hurting when they're snatching, there's probably either, they probably have too much volume and they haven't adapted well. Um, and so we've got to ease back on that volume. Or there's some type of, of mobility or range of motion issue going on, or they're just substantially weaker than what that load is overhead. Um, so I think that that's, that's a lot of the, the big stuff that we got to think of. LOL BG. How can I get peak strength for free? Because this app is fire. Uh, dude, and the crazy thing with the app is it's only going to keep getting better. Uh, we're going to keep putting in crazier, crazier stuff. Um, AGC. Any nutritional guidance in, in its relation to energy systems? I think typically what you're going to see, uh, supplement creatine, if, we, if you lack, you know, when, when we talked about this with like blast impulse, sustained impulse, one of the big aspects that I would say right away when someone lacks blast impulse or they struggle in the alactic system, get them on creatine right away. Uh, another thing, energy system for, for as, as far as aerobic training is concerned, I don't know how any of these people are, are out there doing keto and aerobically training. I don't think that that's going to be... Um, I don't think that's going to be anything of, of value, to be totally frank with you guys. Sasha, hi, everyone. Question, how can I build athletic power and strength for soccer with bodyweight exercises? You don't have access. So that's pretty easy. You know, we want to look at strength. So single leg work. Um, what I would say there, Sasha, is like skater squats, pistol squats, walking lunges, step-ups, Cossack squats. That's going to help with your strength. Power, you're going to look at jump lunges, jump step-ups, hurdle hops, bounds for distance, skip for height, skips for distance. That's what I would try and hit right there. Snake heart entertainment. How do you feel about front squatting with crossed arms as opposed to bent back wrists? Okay, so 
I personally love front squatting bodybuilder style. However, I personally will make fun of high school kids who front squat that way because I feel most people have the mobility to get to that point. Now, if you don't have that mobility and you've got to be able to front squat, uh, you've got to be able to, to front squat with cross armed. I think that's perfectly fine. I don't think it's terrible. I think it's a little bit better to hit that from a true like clean grip front squat. I think it does have. I think a, a clean grip uh, front squat will have better carryover to a power clean to a full clean. Um, but with that being said, I don't think it's the worst thing to go old school bodybuilder style. Uh, you know, I th I think that's really going to be dependent upon each individual. And that's the other thing is, is is you know thinking about Sasha's question about soccer. Okay, if we look at a sport like soccer and we go single leg squats, okay, pistol squats, skater squats, all those things. Soccer is really going to benefit a ton from unilateral training because there's so much trunk control. We know there's a lot of trunk control because when you're playing soccer, one, there's a lot of agility, but two, we've got to look at it. You're playing with an actual uh, object. Okay, any sport that you're playing with a specific object, like a soccer ball, like a football, like pads, like a hockey stick, like a tennis racket, a badminton racket, a pickleball racket for that matter, all of those sports require more trunk control, so they're going to require more unilateral strength, okay? And I think that that's, that's an important topic. I wanted to bring up to you guys, I had a, uh, this, this idea. Do you guys, does anybody know what kabaddi, anybody know what kabaddi is? I want to see if there's any questions around that. Do you know anything about hyper arc fascia training? It seems to be good for sports performance. Hyper arc fascia training. I, I have some reserve around that that seems like it would be something that could be related to um dude there's always these like absolute guys like uh sort of like seedman um i yeah i don't know much about it how to bulk up quickly but staying athletic for a 16 year old hard gainer for soccer players suki what i would say again make sure you're lifting well i'd say you should lift three days a week um I think if you're lifting three days a week, that's going to help you gain some good weight. Make sure you're back squatting a lot, single leg squatting, and eating at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Hard gainers are notorious for saying that they're hard gainers. And then when they track their food, and this is, this is something I've learned. When they track their food, the first two or three days will be like, oh my gosh, I'm not eating anywhere close to what I thought. And then the second thing that you do is you'll see they'll start to like lie about when they're tracking their food, but then they'll also, when you go out to eat with them or something and they're in this bulk, they're a hard gainers. Oh yeah, I'm bulking. I'm bulking right now. And you're watching them eat and they eat like half of a burrito and then they leave the rest on the plate. It's like, how are you bulking? You're not even finishing an adult sized burrito. So I will say the hard gainer stuff sort of drives me nuts. Um, uh, Johan bought the How to Get Faster program a while back. He's not run through it like he should. How do you rate that program now? Dude, that program's sick. I love, I love the How to Get Faster program. And, and what we're doing now is taking those How to Get Faster speed training program, uh, and we're going to start implementing that. You know, We're moving that stuff all into peak strength. So you're going to get all of that. And we've got sprinting in the app. We've got all that stuff in there. Uh, Hey, coach, was doing some V-raises. I assume you mean V-ups. Um, Suki knows what Kabaddi is, Indian touch, hold, breath game. Well, maybe not, actually. Um, and I was doing the V-up, oh, V, oh, Y raises, Ys. Okay, right before I got to top, I could feel a pop around my left shoulder. Uh, any ideas to remedy? It's not painful, but awkward. I would say some type of distraction or do some type of pressing beforehand um, and then, then do some of the Ys. Uh, let's see, Ryan, I need to understand, stand the movement, then put weight on. I like intensity. I'm strong though. I eat too much. Okay. Eric person. If I do dumbbell bench or dumbbell incline, it hurts your shoulder. The same with cable fly. Any tips to prevent it? I'd say, where does it hurt your shoulder? Does it hurt your shoulder when you do a neutral grip bench press or, uh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Does it hurt your, your shoulder when you do a close grip bench? That's another question I would have. Steve, I appreciate that quite a bit. One of the best supporters out there. Again, guys, I think it comes back to understanding what's your goal and how are we going to be getting that goal done? How are we going to be achieving that on a regular basis? Um, 
how can you achieve athleticism while bulking? Again, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and walk you through this. Okay, so how can I build athleticism while I'm trying to gain a little bit of weight? See you, L O L B G. I'll see you. Let's see if 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 I'm trying to gain some weight, okay, and then I'm trying to bulk at the or I'm trying to gain athleticism. The big thing is eat a lot, do a lot of jumps, do a lot of heavier lifting, and understand uh, rapid rates of coordination, chaos coordination, uh, explosiveness, things along those lines. And we've done a whole video on bulking and um, and actually focusing on athleticism as well. Hi, man. I don't have weights and I wrestle. Is there a way I can get bigger and gain strength? I'm in the off season right now. Garage strength, message retracted. I saw that, Jason. Hi, man, I don't have weights and I wrestle. Is there a way I can get bigger and gain strength in the off season? My question to Emerson, do you have access to a pull-up bar in a park? Can you do clap push-ups? Can you do handstand push-ups? Can you do pull-ups on a tree? Can you do pistol squats? Those would be my big questions there. Um, so, yes. Steve, my biggest thing was programming, and this channel has helped me out a ton. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Um, and Steve, I think Garage Strength Program Design, let me know what you thought about Secret Strength Experiments too, Steve. And let me know what you thought about the, the five-hour lectures, if that helped. And then, you know, I think I've mentioned to you, Steve, I'm not sure. Uh, we've got the Coaches Summit coming up in uh, June, early June. And, and so if you have any interest in that, that's going to be – you know, you'd be a great candidate to come out and, and it's basically going to be like advanced uh, programming where we're going to give you even further into uh, how we really, really lay everything out. How many reps in sets to get stronger on bench press and kg? I don't know what kg is. Um, reps in set to get stronger on bench. My favorite go-to would be like six sets of six. Okay, and you do three sets of six of bench all at the same weight and then you do three sets of six where you're ramping up take about a minute and 45 seconds. That would be a rep series that you use on the bench press during the comprehension phase, okay? So I just gave you, okay, so during the comprehension phase on day two, your upper body power day, okay? So we just went over phase, extra, or, uh, workout split, day two, upper body power, bench press, reps, sets, and then the rest period, okay? So I hope that helped for you F1 freestyler. Shoulders should be trained. Shoulder detrained like in history with a sword. I don't feel it with the regular bench. It hurts. Uh, I have to go to Fort Sill for your annual training. Okay. Yeah, it'd be June 2nd or June 3rd. Uh, those two days. How can I put on muscle mass in the offseason as a 15-year-old? Biggest thing, putting on muscle mass in the offseason is... Again, it comes into being in that caloric surplus, okay? So this would be great during high volume phase. High volume phase would be exposure phase, comprehension phase. This is about 16 weeks out, uh, 12 weeks out from a big peak from your season, okay? So if I weigh 220 pounds, my goal should be if I'm eating in a caloric surplus of about, let's say, 400 to 600 calories, okay? Okay. So if, if I'm trying to eat in a surplus, I've got to be in a 400 to 600 caloric surplus. Sorry, I was just reading. Guara, we did sort of answer that. Basically, it comes down to eat in a caloric surplus, do a lot of maximal lifting, do technical coordination movements, and, and uh, athlete day. Obi-Wan Quixote is back in the room. Yes, a 16-year-old sh rugby player should definitely be taking whey protein. For sports performance, what's the advantage of snatch versus cleans? Uh, okay, so snatch versus cleans. I like to use snatch more so on impulse day because you have to apply a lot more power uh, because it's a shorter time frame to accelerate. Or to accelerate, it typically is a longer range of motion, um, and then you could use cleans on the on the leg power day. So on day one, uh, they both do help with trunk control and explosiveness, and they also both help with that refold. You know, getting into the into that refold or the bend position, the compression position. Uh, so they're both fantastic. Clean is going to have its carryover probably to football, 
a little bit more football and wrestling, where a snatch is going to be more so a, a, like a, a soccer player or a volleyball player or even a basketball player might benefit a little bit more from snatch. But they're both absolutely fantastic. I think if you have an athlete who tends to really struggle um, with absorbing a blow, let's say that they get trashed when they, when they get hit on a football field, anything along those lines, that's when they're going to need to clean a little bit more. Is there a, mean, a meaningful difference between zercher squats and front squats? Uh, front squats are much better. Should I bulk and keep on doing calisthenics? Yeah, you can do that for sure. Dynamic trunk control. That's right. That's right. Is it recommended to start shot putting at 34 years old with no former sports background or any sport at all? You can do it. You can try it, but it's not going to be easy. Um, I'm bringing up my phone here because I want to show you guys. This is I just got this text message. I think you can do uh, deadlift in your 40s. So this is going on right down in the front gym with the throwers. Flat bush zombies blasting. So that's Lucas. Lucas just hit a 500-pound a, a back squat there for five, um, which is pretty freaking phenomenal. Um, yeah, 500-pound back squat for five. That's pretty good. Let's see. So shot put, yeah, I don't know if I – that's tough. You know, you could have a lot of fun with it, though, Jeffrey. It's one of those sports that when you go out uh, and you're thrown by yourself, it can be really enjoyable. Hey, Coach, is it possible to increase your one-rep max on bench during a 500 500- – caloric deficit yes i do believe that actually uh you can focus on technique and speed during this phase and you can still hit a pr it is possible to cut weight and uh hit prs on, on strength movements deadlift in your 40s i think it's possible and you should do it any tips on lifting heavy weights always wave loading is fantastic if you if you wave load uh you're basically tricking your body into firing more high threshold uh motor units I also think that, what advice do you get for people who have a Planet Fitness membership? Get another gym membership. Um, I also think the more frequently you lift heavier weights, the better. Um, and Milo, this just goes into how we set up our periodization. If you look at exposure phase comprehension, that's when you're starting to see that we're, we're lifting heavier weights, you know, one set a day, two sets a day, three sets a day. But as you make progress, as you get into the ascension phase, summit phase, that's when you're really, really going to start lifting heavy. And now all the all the throwers are down there just peppering me with uh, with videos. Taman just sent me this one. Maybe they they saw me post that video of Eric. So look at throwing as you got two seconds to develop as much force as possible. Um, and, and that, that's some tough stuff. What sports did you coach beside football throws, weightlifting? Uh, I've worked with swimmers. I have a swimmer right now that just, you know, wrestling, uh, got the South Dakota state wrestling team I'm working with, um, soccer players, volleyball players dude, across the whole, the whole spectrum front squat or back squat for improving speed. I think that depends. So, William, to answer this, you know, we've got an individual who can clean 225 and he can only back squat 235. I would increase his back squat and his clean with his front squat. Uh, he, he, he's weak down in the hole. Uh, DeAndre, so wave load would be like you do a set of three, a set of two, a set of one, and then you go back, do a three, a set of two, a set of one, and you go back, three, a set of two, a set of one. Uh, that's how wave loading sort of works. Ratchet loading is, is another example. Uh, one six method is another example. Running contact with ground is good for being athletic. Always run so your legs work as they're supposed to. Uh, that's from Ryan Walker. Ryan, I would agree to a point. I, I, I don't think you need to run like super, super long distance, but it's definitely going to benefit as well uh, uh, that much for sure. Would you recommend dirty bulking? Ice cream. I love ice cream. Brown sugar, junk food to increase calorie intake to build muscle, even if for athletic goals. Sasha, I would say add calories first from protein. And if you're still struggling, then throw in some milk and, and some ice cream. Any tips about dynamic trunk control for older hobby athlete with thirsty teammates? Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. I would, I would say um, – I'm going to answer Steve here. Uh, dynamic trunk control work for older hobby athletes. 
This would be where doing plyometric work with side jumps, uh, putting plates out when you jump, anything like that, uh, reflexive work, using a hydro weight, using plates overhead, that's where you're going to see some real quick payoff. Oh, I just realized dynamic trunk control. No, dynamic drunk control from v Via. Via Tikanen. I'm assuming you're Finnish, but yeah, I just, I just picked up on that joke. Sorry, I was a little late to that. Um, so Steve, how I laid out, how I laid out South Dakota State's program, okay, was basically high volume, so exposure phase and comprehension. We started in the summer and we worked through summit phase until August. And then we went back to um, end of August, into, sept into September, into October, we went back to exposure comprehension phase, okay? They started their, their first tournament was the end of October, early November. Uh, it was like the, yeah, it was like November 2nd or 3rd. We still had pretty high volume there, and I, I convinced them to go through the second week of November into the comprehension phase. And then what we did was I said, all right, let's back off for two weeks so everybody wrestles really well. They feel strong out on the mat, okay? So we went like basically a deload for two weeks and then up until Christmas break. So now we're talking about four weeks. We went back to going into the Ascension phase, the Ascension phase pushing some weight and some volume. Okay. So that happened uh, during December. Then when they came back after Christmas break, now we're in early January, we go three weeks where we push pretty hard Ascension into the summit phase. Okay. And then end of January, up until right now, so March 12th, they lifted yesterday, March 11th. That was their last lift uh, before they headed out. Now we went about seven weeks, where pretty much we have one hard lift on a on a like a Monday or a Tuesday, depending upon their schedule, and then they have a body weight and band lift. So we're going back and forth, body weight band, and then uh, a harder upper body or hard a hard combo lift, um, and then we rolled with that up and through Big 12s. Their last lift before Big 12s, Big 12 started on a Saturday. Their last lift was on a Tuesday. Uh, then they came back. We reloaded for, for the NCAA tournament. And now their last lift was Saturday. And then they're going to start wrestling on Thursday. So that's how I laid out their programming. Uh, they did a body weight and band stuff on Saturday. They did a, a full body leg lift on Wednesday or full body lift on Wednesday. Um, and that full body lift had some bench, had power cleans in it. Uh, some single leg work, uh, but nothing that's going to get them too, too sore. So I hope that helps Steve laying that out. Any recommended side hustles for student athletes who go to school and train every day? I think help other athletes do technical analysis, help them write programs, uh, help them figure out what they can, what they can improve upon. Um, Gunner. All right. Uh, that's going to help. Best exercises for vertical jump. Okay. Now this is going to be phase dependent. But if I was in the ascension phase, I would do two box snatches, uh, power cleans, and then pause front squats, okay? And I would do those for about five doubles, six triples, something like that. Uh, I would go on about a minute 20 rest, and then I would build up over that over a long period, over the next four to six weeks, four to eight weeks, and that's going to help. Uh, best exercises for a running back. That's going to come down to one box clean. If I'm in the ascension phase, if I'm in the summit phase, I like two box power clean. Uh, I would like front squats. I like back squats, especially unbroken back squats during the ascension phase. I like single leg squats quite a bit on day, day one, leg day, day one. Uh, we would do single leg squats uh, unbroken to really train that dynamic trunk control. And again, reps and sets are going to be dependent upon that phase. Assessing to barbell. For leg exercise can be a challenge at time. Assessing to barbell for leg exercise. I don't know what that question is. Best exercise for increasing speed and explosiveness. That's going to be single leg stair jumps. Um, sled pulls. So put a 35-pound plate on a sled. Sprint 20 to 25 meters. We want to train about... Five to eight seconds if we're training increasing speed and explosiveness. That's going to be that glycolytic system. That's going to help improve that quite a bit. Um, yeah, and then some type of like power clean, full clean. I love that as a as a as a combo lift. That's like my favorite complex. 
Any anything else there? I think that's the big thing too. Is that you're looking at if you're trying to increase. Uh, I mean, here's a here's a great. Damn it, that was a great uh, split training split right there. Oh, there's a picture of Haley. I mean, just look at this. You could see here what that what that chart looks like. That's the that's how that split of intensity and volume is going to be made up uh, during the during the comprehension or during the ascension phase. You can see what's going on with the athletes there, um, and that's the whole thing with the programming is being able to look at it and go, okay, this is my goal. You know, here's a great image for uh, lower body power day. You know, again, that that if we're looking at workout splits. We see that lower body power day is going to really be broken up into a technical coordination movement. And we got the sets in there uh, with the reps and sets. And then we, we're going to get into, you know, four to seven sets of one to four reps, right? So, so then that, what are we going to do after we execute that? That's going to be absolute strength movement. So single leg squat. And, and then you, you could potentially pair that with like a Chinese side bend, something along those lines. And then we got some lower body hypertrophy work, some dynamic truck control work. Okay, so that's how we want to look at it and lay everything out. And especially, you know, this is page 53. That's the chart on 53. It's crazy. We did a pretty good job with this book of improving, uh, one, the layout, the images and everything. And even these exercises. I mean, here's Jan. You can see Jan getting ready to do a linebacker power jerk. Um, you know, starting linebacker up at Penn State for a while, played for the Tennessee Titans, cut by the Texans. You know, this would be a good look at, at what an athlete day. A lot of people will be like, what should I do on a plyometric day? Well, if, if I hear that, what should I do on a plyometric day? Plyometric day is going to be that athlete day. What are the best exercises for busy soccer players? Skater squats, single leg squats, power cleans, and, and you know, some stair jumps, some, some sprints with a sled. Those are some of the, 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 the key go-tos. Uh, Exercises for a linebacker. Exercises for a linebacker, okay? Leg power day, best exercises for a linebacker. We're looking at a high hang clean, okay? We're looking at a front squat. And then we're going day two, upper body power, linebacker jerk, and a bench, okay? Maybe some towel pull-ups for holding, okay? Athlete day, we're looking again at some type of, of power clean. And then we're going to do... Uh, seated hurdle hops with gwiz jumps into mini gwiz jumps into mini hurdle hops. Okay, impulse day. We're looking at unbroken single leg squats. These are all for linebackers. You know, we're just throwing it at you. I'm just throwing this whole book right at you. And so this book is Garage Strength Program Design. You can head over to GarageStrength.com. Today's the last day for the entire deal that we're running here. Um, 50%. I think it's more than 50%. Jason. I think the uh, pinned comment should be it's the last day because it's a $350 value that they're getting. Because don't forget, guys, you will also, also get Olympic weightlifting and sports performance and a secret strength experiments. I want to see. Steve, you didn't comment on that secret strength experiments. Best off-season lifts. Um, best off-season lifts for a high school wrestler. Dude, full cleans, front squats, and bench and pull-ups. You get strong as hell as a wrestler doing that. Um, can you do a video on how to train to survive the zombie apocalypse? Civil uh, unrest. Damn, that's a good idea, Sharky, to release that on April Fool's. Let me write that down. Surviving zombie apocalypse. I actually really like that, Sharky. Um... Steve, I'm not, I think the only problem I have with lifting on a competition day is that it can take away from their competitive movements. I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't mind power cleans or like fast back squats, but I think it can take, take away from it. Uh, no, that's okay, Steve. Let me know when you do. So, stress by a mountain of books. If you don't have access to a gym, but you probably have access to a hill or somewhere that you can run, somewhere that you can do jumps, um, and so, you, know, you can still do uh, 
pistol squats, skater squats. You know, that's that's what I would do. Uh, hip issues. My favorite thing is to do a quad stretch on the single leg squat stand that we sell. Uh, my my other thing, uh, pigeon pose for sure. Keist, will we see a Hollywood a Halloween? Jeez, special workout with only Halloween themed exercises. Yeah, we might be able to do that. That's a long way off though. I'll send you an email. Thank you, Steve. Um, hey, you guys didn't respond to. Uh, we're gonna. We are trying to uh, put together a deal where each video, and nobody really responded to this, so I want to see what you th you think about this. So if we put together a video, okay, and the video comes out, and inside the video, you have to like, comment, and have notifications on, okay? And then in our public lives, we're going to announce a winner for every single video. So every single video, we want comments it's for you to ask a question or leave a comment about the video. The video sucks, Dane's weak, you know, whatever. But you still have, you subscribe to the channel, you got all notifications on. And then, so we're going to do that with all of our videos. And then at the YouTube Lives, we're going to give away these shirts. And we want to see, I, I want to reveal these shirts. It's like a graffiti, uh, a graffiti pump cover. Who's the strongest athlete I've ever seen? Ooh, that's a good Joe Kovacs. No questions asked. Snake Heart Entertainment. Joe Kovacs, strongest athlete I've ever seen. No questions asked. Uh, lift in the morning. Hard running workout later. No running workout first. Hard running workout first. Best explosive lift for a defensive end. Afu, we got a, like three three videos on this. No, these are I got those aren't Yogi uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. These are these are Pokemon. That's why I'm a champ. Only a nine, sadly. We just got done with freestyle Greco tournament. Everyone is passed out in the car. That's funny, Steve. That's hilarious. That's where it's like they're all tired because it was a lot of wrestling and they were also confused. Um, okay. AGC wants to see the shirt. So this would be the T-shirt. Let me know if you think this sucks or not. I sort of like it a lot. I, I look at it like this is a sick pump cover. You get to wear it, it says swole on it. And we're going to sell them. Um, oh, man, I got a little glare on that. Yeah, of course I watched that, the Rose Bowl Live. Um, but then if you comment on the videos and you leave comments each week, We'll announce who's the winner of two free t-shirts. Okay, so every single week we're going to do that. And ideally over time, uh, we're going to come out with, with more shirts that are branded. Um, and, and just to get you guys, that's right, Steve, that's, the high school kids will think you're cool. Um, you know, get you guys to feel, you know, you see somebody in the, and a lot of people do comment about my shirt. So that's another thing. I want to make cool shirts for us. So that you guys can can wear them. Plus, it gets the community discussing things uh, more. Uh, and, and, dude, I'm telling you guys right now that the more we put out content on periodization, on exercise selection, on reps and sets, on rest periods, on energy systems, New England Patriots, the more we do that, I think everybody's going to get more and more educated. We're going to start talking about mechanical tension and tonnage. we got a big video on that. So I'm excited for it. Transitioning from long distance running to athletic explosive based weightlifting training, Polish soccer 15. I think that's okay. Like, are you bad at long distance running? Well, then you probably should weightlift or do something like that. Are two strength sessions per week for uh, enough for a weak soccer player? Three sessions of strength training is easy to get. Everybody can get three a week. Okay. Everybody can do leg power day. Everybody can do upper body day. And then everybody can do an athlete or an impulse day. With the t-shirt thing being for NA-based only or rest of the world as well? Um, Keith, that's a good question we got to answer. I'm not sure about that. If you buy it, we'll ship it to you all around the world. The giveaway it might just be North America. Do you ever recommend a short calisthenic-based power cycle between tw regular 20-week cycles? Um, you can do like a deload for a week or something audacious yeah you could do that for calisthenics for like a week for sure enzo just bought your book on weightlifting parabolic periodization enzo just got this one 
He didn't get this one. He got this one. But this one's also available. As is this one. And this one. And this, you can get the course for free if you buy this one today. So you can get this book and this course plus five other hours of lectures for 99 bucks. Okay. Um, let me see. Let me answer that question, Enzo. Could you tell me what should a defensive back focus on during in-season trainings? So a D-back for me should be doing high-hang power cleans, uh, high-hang power snatches. Maybe on Sundays you could do full snatches and then fast single leg squats and a lot of cutting drills. Uh, what would you substitute for running long distances like two to three miles? Uh, would this be for you, Steve, or would this be for your wrestlers? If it's for you, I think... Sharky, thank you. Boom. Uh, if it's for you, Steve, I think do some assault bike work. Uh, can you make content on power building with a focus on Olympic lifts? Maybe we could do that on GSW. Do you guys follow Garage Strength Weightlifting? We could do power building with weight lift, with uh, Olympic lifts. Uh, power building. Power building and athleticism, to me, that's, that's like a decent idea. I like that idea. Um, I think, Steve, I think your wrestlers could still run two to three miles. I don't think that'll be detrimental. I think for you, I would do like... 20 minutes on the assault bike at 55 RPMs if you have that or a sled. Um, should Derek Lewis pursue, pursue a career in stand-up comedy? I don't think I've seen Derek Lewis's uh, comedy. I'd have to watch that. Yeah, I'd have to watch that. Is it funny? I don't know. Athlete day, just a vertical workout or should also include speed drills? Should also be in athlete day. Athlete day for us is vertical and horizontal jumps. Uh, all keys to, to those high rates of coordination. Um, we got a video coming out where we sort of highlight buys and tries too. Can plyos only help with getting strong and fast? I have no lifting base. I'm an amateur boxer. It's also going to help you with explosiveness. Uh, it will help you with everything along those lines. And that's for Guru. Uh, absolutely fantastic for, for uh, strength base. Three sets of front squats or front squats and back squats each two sets. So, I'm going to show you this again, okay? And this is something, an example that we've been doing a lot in training. Oh, maybe, I think this might be the video where Lucas dies. Oh, no, this is Lucas's. This is Lucas hitting that 265. Whoops, that's my, uh, that's my American Express card. So, answering this question, okay, so that's 265. Oh, he's getting another one here. Jeez. Okay, so I wanted to answer that question because what we've been doing is playing around with like three to four heavy doubles, okay, three to four heavy doubles, and then after we hit those three to four heavy doubles, we're doing two sets of front squats timed, um, so I really like doing both front squats and back squats. Now, um, I would say stick with just one of those for the most part. Um, and then you can do, you know, I, I like doing like a, a front squat drop set that's lighter just to continue to improve someone's front squats. I don't like Zercher squats because of the stress it puts on the bicep and, and, and what it can do to the elbow joint. Um, I'm not saying it's a bad lift. I just don't like using them. I think you can get the work done with a front squat. Uh, you can add small plyo workouts to your rest days, but you can it can impede your fatigue, your uh, your recovery. Dwayne's a 192 pound linebacker, and can I do vertical cardio exercise on my two rest days? If so, what do you suggest? Easy, easy cardio work, easy cardio work, and then maybe one day of vertical jumps. Um, who's the most explosive I've ever tra trained? Is probably Yaime. 
Uh, Haley Reichert's extremely explosive. You know, she's like 5'1", and she can, dude, she has like a 31-inch vertical, uh, which is crazy. Yaime, uh, absolutely, she's got like a, a nine and a half foot broad jump. Uh, and then Sam Mattis, another absolute freak. Uh, some of my weightlifters are, you know, Jake, Jake Horse is extraordinary. Uh, Barry, I had a scare with back squat. With back collapsing box squat kind of put me off squatting. What exercise would you recommend? I think there it's like having a very, very controlled um, eccentric and just not overloading your, your box squat and really focusing on driving that, uh, driving that chest up. Barry McCockiner, I feel like that might be Gary McCallicker. So Steve, yeah, back squat would be one A, and then you'd have you'd have a two A drop set of front squats. Hey, coach, what elements of your programming would you incorporate into powerlifting? Um, so as far as powerlifting is concerned, I wouldn't change much. The everything would still be pretty much the same. We'd still have a leg power day, and we would be going heavy probably on back squats on that day. Uh, on day two, upper body power day. That's for the day we're going to focus on bench press. Okay, so we want to smash some big time bench press work and work on our speed, work on some hypertrophy. We're still going to have a, an athlete day that I would probably combine into impulse day. So day three would be a combo of athlete and impulse. And we would probably do like a power cleans or speed deadlifts and, and still do some explosive work. And then on day four, we would do hypertrophy work for the upper body. Um, that's, that would be my answer to Elise. Uh, Evan, as a distance runner, how does this program apply? What sports specific exercises for athlete day? Impulse hypertrophy day. So Evan, what I've been doing for me, I just ran 11.6 yesterday, walked a half mile, and then I ended up running the last mile of a half marathon. Okay. Uh, yeah, bro did turn completely red. So for me, I want to focus on single leg squats. Okay. A lot. I like to focus on step ups as well. So barbell step-ups, dumbbell step-ups, goblet squats. I want to increase uh, my overall tendon strength so I feel good around my ankle as well. So I want, to, I want to make sure that I'm doing sled pushes, sled pulls. Those are some big factors around uh, distance running. Um, impulse day would be that day of fast single leg squats, a lot of hamstring work. Athlete day would be you know, focusing on single leg jumps and, and stuff like that to help that power output so that if I'm running a mile, I take... 20 less steps every mile because my power output's higher. Uh, if I could pick any athlete, who would you like to train? Oh, man, that's, dude, I would want to train someone like Lamar Jackson. Travis Kelsey. My only thing is, though, is like some of those big D tackles like Aaron Donald. I'd love to work with somebody like that. Just get, dude, those guys are freaking animals um what do you think about training twice a day i think training twice a day is is fine if you're a professional level athlete you can train twice a day um my back squat pr i did 272 for six high or 272 for six low bar powerlifting stance okay so wide stance low bar that's when i was in college and i weighed about 295 uh, during COVID, I want to say I hit 252 for a high bar single um, during COVID. So that would have been two years ago, three years ago, and I was around like 255. Uh, so that would have been my best high bar. Um, hi, Dane. Can I have an accessory exercise to improve changing angles in boxing? Yes. Um, an accessory exercise I would do would be drop lunges. Drop lunges to a hip lock. Drop lunges to a hip lock. Jalen Hurts would be a guy I would love to train. Absolutely. Kelsey, Holmes, uh, or Mahomes, uh, Jason Kelsey, absolute freak. Uh, yeah, for sure. And some of these basketball players, you see what they're doing. Actually, I was just watching um, uh, Mac McClung. I was just watching some of his training. He's a freak too. Uh, but yeah, all those guys for sure. Football player, track player, and I have an old shoulder injury that's still bothering me and my bench got worse. Worse. I can train upper body twice a week. Can I do something? Look, I'd, I'd go if, you're, if your upper body hurts, you still get a lot of volume from a lot of push-ups. 
do 100 push-ups every night or, or 50 clap push-ups every night. I'd also recommend dumbbell benching with a neutral grip till your shoulder stuff goes away. Do a lot of rows, a lot of pulls. Okay, that's going to help. Francesco is wondering, how can I incorporate both squats and single leg squats into your program? So, Francesco, what we do, and we sort of lay that out inside a, inside a garage strength program design, um, is that I like to show you, and, and even if I, you know, we go over, so you, when you pick this up today, you get this, you get this and you get $100, or you get this and you get the five hours of lecture, this with five hours of lecture for 100 bucks. And so what I do is I'll go into it, I'll say, all right, you see on the cover, Nick Singleton's best, you know, one of the best running backs in the country. Single leg squatting, okay? If I want to put that into a program, I'm going to look at something like uh, an example in here. So let's go and look at, um, let's look at an impulse day, okay? So if I go in and I look for, this is going to show me the type of splits that I want, okay? And then I can go in, Trying to get the speed. Oh, there's Nick right there on page 146. Okay, so then I'm going to get in here and I'm going to look at impulse day. Okay, so I can look at the specific workouts here by, I got a phase, ascension phase, summit phase, realization phase, workout splits here, uh, impulse day. Okay, so then when I go back and I look at impulse day on my training days, okay, well now I can look at it, go, all right, here we go, listen to this. Day, uh, 1A on impulse day, a snatch or a power clean. Okay, 2A, you do a front squat, a back squat, or single leg squat. That's an example. So I would put single leg squat 2A on impulse day. And if I did that, well, then I would go on day one on leg power day, which is in here, I would do back squat. So if I notice that I'm really weak on my single leg, well, now I'm going to put that on my day that I want to go heavier. Okay, so I, I would alter that way. I would look at leg power day and impulse day. What's your opinion on old time uh, strongman? That, that bending of the coins, I think that stuff's neat. I'm not into it, but I like watching it. Do you ever have athletes just come on on the weekend based in Pittsburgh? Young suit, yes. Uh, athletes will come like Sunday or, or Monday and they'll come in and train. Uh, what should a soccer player focus on in the weight room? That's like the fifth soccer question. So I'm going to put soccer down as a note, okay? And I would even check out our, our peak strength. Steve Wonderland saying that this book is worth, and the course is worth 2,500 bucks. I appreciate that a lot, Steve. Maybe we should put that on our landing page. Um, I think you can use landing uh, landmine push press for technical coordination, but I think there's a better way to get that done. Uh, I would do dumbbell snatch. <clears throat> I think Keith, you would ask this, and I think, <laughs> I think this is something we're really considering to do. Yeah. Ideas for eight-week off-season girls high school volleyball program, complete novices. So I would go in, and what I would think about for if if I was developing a, a soft or a volleyball program, okay, novices, they learn how to lift, they learn how to squat, they learn how to do dumbbells, power snatches, stuff like that. I'm going to go in and create one for you. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to build a program, and, and this, will be, this will be in peak strength. Check this out, okay? So this is for, this is for Philip. <coughs> I'm going to put, I'm training for build new program, okay? So I'm going to train for volleyball. Okay, where is it? I probably passed it already. Nope, there it is. So I'm going to train for volleyball, okay? I'm going to put in experience level beginner, okay? And then I'm going to put in that I'm going to train three days a week. And then let's just put in here like bench presses 100 pounds, back squat, back squats, you know, 130, 100. Okay, so here, and now I'm going to build the program. Oh, shoot, I didn't train to change the peak date. But I would have also changed the peak date. And so this would, this would be that first, you know, overhead squat, power cleans, um, you're looking at heel elevated split squats, reverse hypers, duck walks for mobility. You know, that's going to show you JPEG Mafia is legit. Uh, absolutely. 
I mean, Zach De La Roca is who I like grew up with listening to Rage Against the Machine. And then on an upper body day, you do like a bench press, new, neutral grip, lat pull down, chair dips, meadow swings, landmine presses, external rotations. You know, so that that was for Philip there answering that. Is having six training sessions good on the weekends? That's that's a lot uh, if we're counting Friday as a weekend. But that's a lot. I I, I would just do four probably. Um, should a high school thrower be in the weight room during their outdoor season? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, Zach De La Roca, again, I answered that question. Sorry, young suit. Uh, yeah. I mean, dude, he's legit. Um, what's my honest opinion on CrossFit? Okay, this is a good one. For, this is for Jeffrey. My honest opinion on CrossFit is that we as strength coaches have like poo-pooed CrossFit. Can I row to my to my peak strength program? I noticed there isn't a yeah. There's rows in there. There should be rows, bent over rows in there. But as strength coaches, we've just put down CrossFit, okay? And the reason being that we put it down is because we look at it as a training regimen. We look at it as a training system, and I think it's really important that we don't look at CrossFit as a training system. We look at CrossFit as a sport. So as a sport, CrossFit is a crazy sport. It's, it's, it's high speed. There's a lot of things being tested. There's a lot of strength characteristics going on. There's a lot of technique involved. There's a lot of stuff that's very, very challenging. It's challenging mentally. It's challenging physically. It's not a training system. And we've looked at it as a training system. I would not use CrossFit tests as a training system. I would use, you know, garage strength program design and look at things and then base that off of how I would peak the individuals. Okay, so I think that's that's the way I look at it is as a sport, it's wild. There's a lot of stuff going on and it's crazy how much uh, women have adapted the best to CrossFit. There's so many more women in resistance based training now. Their bodies are healthier. They're stronger, uh, more bone density. And that's where I think as a sport, we've seen people get more fit. But again, it's not the training. I don't include that as a training system. The training system that I would use to train a CrossFitter is different. Um, Tamid has bought our training program for MMA. Uh, he's training to be a fighter, which has a style similar to Demetrius Johnson and Dominic Cruz. Okay. For, do you have a custom program? Yes, we do offer custom programs. You can go to garagestrength.com and there are custom programs in there, uh, that you would fill out. And we have a whole bunch, it's like a vetting system where you would actually like almost get interviewed so that we have so many people that do custom programs with us that we interview you to make sure you're actually committed. Cause most people, they want a custom program and they'll do it for two months. And I don't want to deal with that. If you want to train with us and be legit and do a real custom program, you've got to put forth effort to get into our system. Uh, so yeah, that's just to let you know, Jeffrey port. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. A lot more people have started to learn Olympic lifts, uh, and even powerlifting because of CrossFit. What would you consider best for a soccer player, weightlifting or calisthenics? They're both good. I'd start soccer players off with power cleans and single leg squats. And then also a lot of calisthenics. R2 is back in this. Nice to see you, R2. Uh, can you train heavy leg power day when your legs are still tender from the previous training? You can do it. You got to increase your mobility, maybe, or inc improve your recovery. And there might have been a couple of days there that maybe. Um, Maybe you, you, you didn't have enough time uh, for recovery. I, I would wonder if that, that's part of it. Is that from the, the impulse day, I would say? Is that what's making you sore? Uh, let me know about that. Let's take two more questions because it's a Sunday and I want to get home. And don't forget, guys, it's all coming back to phases. Phases, workout splits. Then you take the workout splits and you break down the exercises. And the exercise selection is based off strength characteristics. And the strength characteristics... And the exercise determines the rep and the sets and the amount of rest period. And that's what's going to be the key behind understanding garage strength program design. Available at garagestrength.com. And you get a five-hour course. And along with that five-hour course, you get this course as well. Olympic weightlifting and sports performance. Will the split squat help with one foot bounds? 100%. 100%. Um... What are your top three posterior chain exercises to just blow up? Dude, I love snatch grip, a stiff-legged snatch grip. 
Okay, stiff legged snatch grip deadlift. Okay, snatch grip, stiff legs. Lights up hamstrings, posterior chain, lower back. Single leg squats with the front foot a little bit further forward. Um, absolutely fantastic for posterior chain development. I would probably say then back squat, uh, high bar back squat. You know, some people are going to say, oh, well, you use your quads more, but I think you, you could do, you could get away with that. Um, yeah, for sure. Dane, what if you only got dumbbell and barbell, but you want to be explosive? You can still use your body weight. We can use our body weight to be more explosive, okay? Knee jumps to hurdle hops, uh, all those things. Steve, thanks for your time. Thanks for coming in and checking out the, to the, the, the channel. Um, I'm glad you were telling somebody about us. At the, at the tournament today. Hopefully, South Dakota State comes up with some, some All-Americans this coming week. Current bench is 85 kilos four months from now. Uh, and this is for N1KZ. N1KZ, um, I think you could do it, but you I would get on our bench plateau program or I would pick up peak strength and it's going to help you blow that up. Um, yes, uh, RDL snatch grip deadlift's good, but, but RDL has more knee flexion than a stiff-legged dead. I play soccer, can use lacrosse training to improve my soccer training. Yeah. What about Ta Tamid? Have you checked out our soccer information and stuff on Peak Strength's channel? Go to the Peak Strength channel. We got a lot of soccer stuff there, and we will have more. All right. I'm going to head out. Again, go check out the Garage Strength program design. It's got everything in there so you guys can help start designing your program. And if you don't want to do that, head over to Peak Strength so that you can get on that journey to attain your own peak strength. Um, would you do a podcast as I live listening to your lives? Jack 2001, we have a podcast and it's called the Masters of Sport Podcast. Okay, the Masters of Sport Podcast. We're possibly going to rebrand it to the Garage Strength Podcast. It's still going to be the same layout. Um, Amar, what are your questions? I'll answer them. Like, let me see. Favorite exercise for vertical and basketball players? Amar, my favorite, my favorite is a high hang power snatch for vertical, or a dumbbell snatch, or trap bar jumps, or slow eccentric front squats, or slow eccentric back squats, and then depth jump to bound or depth jump to vertical jump. I just gave you like seven all options there, uh, Amar. I hope that helped. Um, those are the absolute best that you can use for increasing your vertical jump. Um, have a good night's sleep. R2, make sure you get a cold shower in the morning. Get the sunlight on your eyeballs to establish that circadian rhythm. Again, head over to garagestrength.com. You guys can pick up the Garage Strength program design and the book and the course. It's five hours of lecturing, over 180 pages of a, board, of a book. We've got over 75 programming templates to help you guys achieve that greatness, and conquer all of your goals. Until next time, peace.